All right, let's go ahead and do it. Greg in the building. What's going on, my G? Nothing much, nothing much. All right. You want to know about that car? Well, hold on. We, uh, well, we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. Let's, let's, uh, let's get a little background about yourself first. So Absolutely. Go, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell the people, you know, what you do for a living. All right. Well, Greg, I also go by Customer Stage Guy on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And I'm a mechanic, a former Army veteran as, as well, but I don't really hang up on that too much. I do most of the mechanic work. Uh, Thank you for your service. Turning a, that's no problem. I've been turning a wrench for about as long as I can remember, ever since I was a little kid. I was I grew up not on the blessed side, so, uh, you know, if I wanted something or needed something fixed, I had to do it myself. Mm -hmm. uh, and it branched off from, you know, building go-karts as a kid to working on people's cars, and here I am today. All right, all right. So you uh you, you went into the you went into the service after you graduated high school or what when did you go into the service? I I went into service December thirtieth, two thousand nine. Okay. I graduated in oh seven. Okay. Took a couple of years of uh talking myself into joining actually. Uh most of my actually ninety percent of my family is all ex military and of you know, some shape, form or another. Uh, and I decided it was a good time for me to go because at, the, at, the, at that point in time in my life, it wasn't looking too good. I saw the highways that was open to me, and I'm like, none of these look like good, viable options. Okay. And I'm like, you know what, military. Military looks like a good option for me right now, and that's why I joined. So you jumped into the military 2007. Uh, mm, well, let me see. You, how, how long you stayed in, and why didn't you, and, and why didn't you finish? Ah, I was in for four and a half years, and I actually got deployed and everything. I went to Iraq, did my tour, uh, do my my duty time. Mm -hmm. Uh, ended up getting hurt, and I couldn't re up. Oh man! Yeah, at the time they were actually trying to downsize the military, so they were looking for any and all reasons to, you know, if they could cut somebody, they would. Yeah. And luckily enough, I was able to ETS and get my honorable discharge and everything, even after I got hurt. and every, uh, I know a couple of my friends who got other than honorable just because of, you know, some stupid reasons, but they were trying to cut any and everybody that they could. Wow. So you, so, so you got hurt in Iraq? Uh, actually, I got hurt, uh, hurt on the going home on my mental relief, uh, but uh, and then I got hurt several times while on while back home on base. I actually was uh, I got run over once, uh, shot once. Wait, and wait, 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 wait! You you say shot, shot as in yeah. as in bullet shot. Yeah, through the leg. Friend, friendly fire? No, no, it was uh oh, just an old. Best way I can describe it, it was a. One random truck with a gun on the back of it doing pop shots at the fob I happened to be residing in at the time. And, it, well, one of the bullets got me in the leg. Wow. Man. So. So. <laughs> so your, your four years of, of, of military service was kind of, was kind of tumultuous there, huh? It was eventful at times. I'll give it that. Your, yeah, your, there was a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a lot of times where I didn't do anything but just sit around and wait for stuff to happen. But yeah, there, there was a few times it got eventful. Your your time over in Iraq. Uh, did you did you see any action over there? I luckily didn't didn't see as much as some did. Uh, I was part of a unit that was treated kind of like the redheaded stepchildren of the of the military. Mm -hmm. We were part of a QRS. Uh, outfit quick reaction force is what that is and we got sent off pretty much in the middle of nowhere and we had to train and figure out how to pretty much handle anything like downed aircraft or downed uav drones or anything like that we had to take care of all that oh okay 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 that's what's up all right so, so you essentially oh go ahead yeah essentially if they, yeah essentially if they called us in Something bad was happening. They needed somebody to take care of that area and own it really quick, and that's what we did. All right. 
right, all right, that's what's up. So uh, you you on your way back, uh, you know everything was happening to you. You got an honorable discharge, and also you was hurt. So are you still you know getting residuals from from the service because of because of your oh, injury? Oh yeah, absolutely. I've got you know I'm I'm I've got a little monthly check that I, I get thanks to the VA, which God took forever for him to actually go through. Mm-hmm. But I um, mean I'm I am getting a little bit of something for it. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so how how was you feeling? Because, you know, like a, a lot of the guys that came back from Iraq, you know, that came back to the States and came back to the world of the living, how how did that – how how was your mental when you when you got back? Oh, that was – that's an interesting uh, thing to describe. I had a very unique way of thinking when I came back. Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty much I let everything that I was attached to go, <laughs> friends included. You know, uh, it's not like I was, you know, I was like the emo kid in the back of the bus, you know. I was, I was uh, just didn't form any attachments to anything or anyone. Is it true? Mainly because, huh? Is, is it true what they say, uh, you know, is it true what they say you, when you go into the service and, you know, you go into active duty? that you literally had to let everything go in order to do the job that needed to be done? Not with everything. I mean, you have jobs in the military that are full-time active duty that, you know, you can lead a perfectly healthy lifestyle in and out of the military, you know, during duty and while on duty. Me, I had a combat MOS. I was a 19 Delta, which is called a Cavalry Scout. Mm -hmm. Now, while on base, they called us 19 details because we, you know, our job wasn't really home user friendly. I guess best way to put it, like it, you know, there was no free scout back home. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're just part of supply or a mechanic or something like that, then yeah, there's work to be done back home. You know, nobody to really spy on here. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. All right. So after you know, after coming out of the out of the service, uh, was you was was you able to you know jump right into you know mechanic work after you got out of service, or you just took some time off? Well, once I got out of service, I took some time for myself because I was stuck being around people for four and a half years, mm-hmm. and of course, my family they wanted to get you know close to me again, and I had to push a lot of them away for a little while uh, because, like I said, I, I was I had I had to have some me time, big right. time. Right. And there was a couple years there where I didn't associate with anybody, anyone, anything. I just did me. Uh, didn't talk to nobody. You know, the whole dating was out out of out of the question. <laughs> I <can't> uh, <laughs> And I just, I, most of the time I was either drinking by myself or fishing by myself or something like that. I mean, it was just me. That's it. And in that time, it gave me time to sit here and think and, you know, regroup some thoughts and stuff like that and get some things figured out on my end. Okay, that's what's up. Because cause my way of thinking has changed from, you know, young me going in the military who, you know, relied on friends and family to this guy who was a completely different person than who came in. Mm, that's what's up. That's what's up. Okay. All right. So uh, out of the military, got yourself together. Now you jumped into the industry of uh, mechanic work. Uh, do you just do car mechanic or are you a diesel mechanic? What, what, what type of – are you an overall mechanic, certified mechanic? What's up? I'm a little bit of an overall mechanic. I – even even back in high school, I was working on stuff like uh, small engines and boats and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I actually do have certifications with Honda, Kawasaki, Kohler, and Husqvarna. I'm actually still considered um, you know, as far as the small engines go. Okay. Uh, but I kind of just work on everything. All right, now let me now 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 that I got me a a, a legitimate certified mechanic on the line. Yo, what what's up with these labor costs, bro? Well, I mean, my knowledge is, you know, my knowledge has has a cost. 
You know, the average person who doesn't know anything about their car, other than the fact that if they turn the key, it cranks up and they can go to the grocery store, mm -hmm. versus I know the process between the key turn, the signals to what solenoids, to what signal wire goes where, to actually make the starter turn over. You know, I know the whole process of the car and how it runs. Mm -hmm. That knowledge didn't come by free. Mm. You're paying for my time, my knowledge, my experience on fixing certain issues. Now, and there there are certain things like, you know, book hours. Where I'm sure if you've, you've been to a shop and they said, well, labor rate on this is three hours. Mm -hmm. You know, for, let's say an alternator. You know, alternator job on, we'll give a, we'll give a random example. A uh, Honda Odyssey minivan. Okay. We'll give a, let's say, you got a, you got a 2018 Honda Odyssey minivan and your alternator needs to be replaced. Book hour time is two and a half hours. Mm. All right. That book hour time that the, let's say the front shop is quoting you, the engineers who come up with that car said it would take two and a half hours to take this alternator out. Okay. Because they're the ones that designed the thing. So they're like, okay, it's going to take two and a half hours to get this alternator out. Once you pull everything out, that you need to pull out to get to this alternator and put it all back on, get everything hooked back up. Two and a half hours is what it's going to take. Okay. And that's where the labor rate starts. Now, there are, I have been on a lot of jobs where, you know, they say, all right, labor rate for this is four hours. I'll get it done in 45 minutes. But do they still charge the four hours, though? I try not to. Now, I do round my stuff up. Mm -hmm. Like, if I work on your car and it takes me 45 minutes to, to do a job, I charge for one hour. Okay. That's fair enough. Yeah. Because it's easier on everybody once, they, once you round it up to that, that, you know, that one unit mm -hmm. versus, okay, well, that's, our labor rate is this, so we got to subtract this and try to get this. And it, it makes it hard for everybody to figure out. And eventually... I just do one or two. Do you think do you think that some mechanics take advantage of that for real for real? There are mechanics out there who like to oversell a issue. Um I can give you an example that I'm sure everybody is aware of. Like with brakes. Mm. Okay. You go into the you know, your shop, you want to get your oil changed and then you know they come back in like like every shop does and say, all right, well, we had your car up in the air and we noticed a few things. Mm. You know, you got your air filter and your brakes are looking bad and, you know, this, that, and the other, right? Right. You, know, you just want to make an oil change. There's a couple of reasons they do that, and I'll break that down here in just a second. But, you know, let's say you go, okay, well, what's my brakes look like? Well... The pads are at this level here. You know, this millimeter, they're supposed to be at this thickness, blah, 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 blah. So we'll go ahead and do brakes and rotors. Brakes and rotors, okay. There's an option on certain road, on rotors, depending on how worn out they actually are, where you can turn them, where you can put them on a lathe and resurface them, give them a new face. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what that does is that gives the brake pad a brand new surface to seat on for brakes. And you're taking literally a thousandth of an inch off of the actual brake rotor itself. Depending on how bad it is. And they just they uh, they, they just upcharge they just upcharge on that, including the oil change. So instead of a well, eight, yeah. so instead of an eighteen dollar oil change, it turned into um, maybe about a fifty or sixty dollar deal right well the eighteen dollar oil changes are long gone now just due to, due to the cost of how much gas and oil costs are at, the, at this point in time oh no more 18 like right now, whoa, 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 whoa. no more eighteen dollar oil change man what's up no our oil changes start off around forty five dollars oh i thought that was yeah. just at the big places like jiffy lube and shit like that no, I mean even to, to, like there was a there was a store and well 
I'm not going to use their actual name, but let's just say it was a very accurate tune auto <laughs> okay, okay. store uh, that they used to advertise a $19.99 oil change. Right. And the past four or five months now, they've taken every single one of those signs down. And they had that sign up back in 2013. Mm-hmm. You know that I'm not, I'm aware of. So they've been out for a while advertising the the twenty dollar oil changes, and because of the cost of oil and everything so far, they've they've taken those down because they've had to increase their prices. Now let me ask you something, Greg. Now back in the day, mm-hmm. you know I used to work on you know I used to work on my car. I used to have a 1977 Delta Oldsmobile Powder Blue two door. Yeah, yeah, the kind of trunk that you can put about a put about a couple of bodies in, you know what I'm saying, with the square with the with the square grill. Oh my god. But um but back then working on, you know, me as an amateur working on my car back then was simple. I mean, everything was was in the face, in front, and I could get to it. I could get to the the air filter. I could get to the thermostat. I can get to the to the uh to the spark plugs and everything. But now cars now did they did they did they do that on you know the cars now did they do that on purpose uh for us you know amateurs not to work on our cars for us to really take it into the mechanics well yes and no on that one there you have to look at how cars are built nowadays versus how they used to be built Mm -hmm. like you said Everything was out in the open. It was, things were easy to replace. Mm-hmm. You know, you had big bulky parts that were, you know, nut and bolt held them together. You know, dashes made out of soybean oil and, and ABS plastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, let's let's take that let's take that 2018 Honda Odyssey that I used for an example and use it again, right? Mm-hmm. I have a 1985 Dodge Ram sitting in my driveway right now. Mm-hmm. My personal truck. Mm-hmm. When I've been restoring for a while, that truck's been around for what, thirty-six years or so. Okay. It's a thirty-five, so yeah, so about thirty, thirty-eight years, or thirty-five, yeah, thirty-five years. I'll get the, get my math right. Mm-hmm. Do you see that same two thousand eighteen Honda Odyssey minivan being around on the road that long? And then with the material, you see not much of it going to be left. The plastic's going to dry rot. The ABS plastic's going to just crack and do be like those second gen or third gen Dodges and just just disintegrate. Cars aren't built to last anymore, mm. and there's a reason for that. I was if you have a car that lasts, yeah. If you have a car that can last you forever, why would you ever buy a new car? Exactly. That's like uh, tires. There was a set of tires that used to be. Uh, I still see them actually. And they, made, and they were made by Michelin, called the Symmetry. And they weren't a great-looking tire, but they came on a lot of cars. And the reason they stopped selling those tires, they never wore out. I would have cars come in the shop with 121,000 miles on them, and they still had 75% of the tread left on them. So, now, the tires were dry-rotted, mm-hmm. but... The tires still had plenty of grip left on them. And we would only replace the tires due to the fact that the tires are 12 years old and looked like they were, you know, flaking away. Shit. So it is true that that uh, that uh that these cars aren't meant to last long like they used to. Yeah. Like so I they, said, I mean, I don't, I don't see these purpose. modern... There's that. There's the cost of production as well. You look at how much steel is in an older car versus a new one. Mm-hmm. You got three times more more metal in an older car. That's yes. three times the price of steel in today's you know cost. Versus you know we have newer. We can replace this with fiberglass and this with carbon fiber and this with ABS. And the vehicle is much lighter, so now we can put a smaller engine in it. And none of this stuff has got what I call the time stamp of time tested. I don't see any, you know, very few cars nowadays 
do I see making it past 30 years old that uh, that are still in good shape? You know what I mean? Wow. Now, I'm sure there's going to be this, this unicorn from, you know, here or there. Like, yeah, here's a here's a 2008 Honda Civic or here's a, here's a 2008 uh, Nissan Titan that's been garage kept his whole life out of the sun. Oil changes on the regular, you know, made sure the dash was oiled on it and all this other stuff. And, yeah, in 30 years, it still looks brand new. That's a unicorn. Mm-hmm. We're talking about the everyday average car that is on the road, that sees sunlight, that's in your driveway, that deals with the weather. I don't see it lasting like these older cars do. That's what's up, man. All right, all right. So that's what's up, man. So let's get into it. You, um, you, you, you at the shop one day, one morning, and all of a sudden, this, this, God, this messy ass car just rolls up into your shop, man. Yeah, the rolling biohazard. Yeah. How? First thing first. How the hell somebody could actually drive that into your shop? I thought well, it was I thought it was fake at first. <laughs> well, I want to clarify a couple things with it. They didn't really they didn't drive it into the shop. Mm-hmm. They parked it outside in our parking lot, which was you know about twenty foot away from the shop. Okay. Apparently, they might, they must have called the service rider, told him all the information about the vehicle, and apparently the, his tag was already in the system, mm-hmm. so they didn't have to go out there and check it. All they had to do was just pull the vehicle up. And they pulled it up, made a ticket on it, it got dropped off, and then they threw the ticket at me and said, all right, here, here's my other job, do it. And I said, all righty. And my job is based on commissions. Right. The more work I, the more work I, I do the better my paycheck is. And I don't know about you, but I like seeing green on my paycheck. Exactly. And now I don't want to do it, you know, I don't don't want to be shady about it by any means. You know, I try to do my work as as honest as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but they they all made a job at me, so I was like, okay, cool. And I walk out there, and I come across this thing. And the first thing I'm met with is the passenger side of the car, which I showed on my video where you can see piles of bottles and you know mcdonald cuff stack six seven deep wow. with old coke or tea in it uh so i kept walking around and looked inside the thing and there's the infamous center console rake sitting there and you can't see the, you cannot see the pedals. You cannot see the shifter hardly. The shifter is almost like eighty five percent covered up. Um, I mean, it's just just a mess. No matter where you look, the front. I mean, all the way to the back window, the back hatch is just trash. When when you walked up to that, what was the first thing that was going through your mind? Personally, me, I'm like, oh, I want to take. This, oh, I'm not gonna miss this opportunity. Uh, <laughs> like I started taking pictures, I started getting you know video. I shot that you know I, I went inside, I put I donned gloves, and I went I went hunting around for a mask. Uh, uh, oh God, I, you can't see it in the video, but I put like a new car like air fresher Christmas tree in my pocket. <laughs> I get, oh man. It, if, if I if I still had my military mop gear, which is the the, the radioactive chemical suits thing, you know the, the one with the gas mask, uh-huh. I would have donned that and hopped in that car. <laughs> oh my! But God. uh, but I saw that and, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna TikTok this, and then I'm gonna tell my boss about this. And I turned around and you know I did I did my video, and I walked up to my boss and said, oh, Have y'all seen this car? <laughs> like, no. What's wrong with it? I'm like. It's a rolling biohazard. It has its own <laughs> ecosystem inside this thing. What did they? What did they say? What, what did they initially say was the matter with the car? It, they said it had a no start issue. Mm-hmm. They said the guy was driving it and it just shut off on him. I can't believe so somebody. Like, okay. I can't believe somebody 
was actually sitting and driving in all of that mess, man. That's Oh, trust me. I, I, I don't see how they do it either. Uh, I can say this, though. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and condone, can, you know, completely condone the guy mm-hmm. or condemn the guy for doing this. I mean, I do realize that there are mental issues out there that cause people to do this. Right. You know, hoarding, you know, hoarding is an issue with some people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, why they get so attached to trash, I, I will never understand. But this guy clearly was a hoarder, and he was attached to all his trash. And some of it, <laughs> like under his driver's seat, the trash started turning into dirt. Wow. The whole bottom of his seat was packed with dirt that used to be trash. Wow. So you got it in the shop. Well, how how did you get it in the shop, bro? Okay. Well, after talking with the managers and everything else about the car, because they they, did, they were unaware of it, mm-hmm. you know, I just just bring it in and do your best with it, man. So like, we need this thing out of here. I said, all right. So I went in, and we have seat covers and steering wheel covers and floor mats that we put on you know customers' cars. Right. And I grabbed about four or five seat covers, which you'll see in the video, the plastic seat covers, mm-hmm. and I started. And held, I put a, I put a jump box on it and held my breath. Turned, you know, turned the key and it fired up. And I pulled it into the shop and that's where I parked it at. Mm-hmm. Luckily, all the work was on the outside of the car, <laughs> under the hood, so I didn't have to do anything inside the car itself. Luckily, because I wasn't going to. Right. Uh, and you know, I fixed the guy, you know, the gentleman's car, and. and Held my breath again, hopped in it, and, and parked it. So when you got it in the shop, uh, what was the problem with it? Uh, the problem was the, the alternator on it. The bearings in it were just completely gone. The alternator, I think the alternator wasn't charging the battery, right? At, at all. In fact, the battery was was uh, dead as well. So the, battery, the alternator went out in the car. So the battery yeah, was when the, the, when the alternator. One, the battery was the only yeah. one that was that was operating the car until it drained out, right? Yeah, it, it just siphoned the battery until it was just gone. Uh, so I ended up replacing the alternator and the battery. There was a body ground that wasn't hooked up on it. I mean, this, this car was this car was in bad shape inside and out. But I fixed his issue. It got running. You know, he had a little squeak there at first. I fixed it real quick. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it was running like a top after that. And I, like I said, I mo- got it outside and sat there and scrubbed myself with uh, Gojo for about 20 minutes. All right. That's what's up, man. So the so the guy came back, got the car. How, how much how, how much was uh was the whole was the whole order? And did you guys did you guys kind of like you know because of the mess we gonna we gonna you know? Oh, oh absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Just like it, it, we pretty much did exactly what you would, would think we would have done there. I mean, we we told the guy, you know, the gentleman that you know, if anything else happens to this car, well, you know, you've got to clean it out first. Mm-hmm. Like this, this mess cannot come back in our shop again. Um, the whole total for his his repair was about eight hundred dollars. Damn. Yeah, you know, it was year? a battery. What, what was the year of the car? It was like a. 2012 Honda CRV or so. Do you? Well, let me ask you this. In your opinion, was it worth fixing? Well, it was worth getting that thing out of, out of the shop, at least the work I did. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what this guy has going for him right now as far as his uh, ordinance issue. But, uh, you know, I try to work on anybody's car equally. I mean, I, I, I don't try to discriminate on, on that. But uh, first mess I've seen that I've, I've had to pull in either. I mean, this is not the first potential biohazard. Far from it. But, 
this was on up there as far as how bad it got. Man. So you you wasn't, well, I guess you was afraid when you did get in the car. But uh, was you was you afraid of little critters in the car? Eh, mice and rats and stuff like that. that. That stuff doesn't really scare me or bother me. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. I don't want them running on me. I don't want to sit there and like, oh, look, here's a pile of crap that left over a rat. Let me just, you know, use my hand and scoop it aside. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's why, like I said, I'm, I'm wearing gloves. I got a mask on. I've got seat covers on. I've got anything and everything that our shop has to offer me separate from the car. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I made sure that before I even got in there, there was actually a open spot for me to sit. Because I didn't want to be leaning on the trash because I didn't know what was in the trash. You know, for all I knew, the guy had diabetes and an open needle there. I didn't know. So I, I treated it like it would be like that. And then you got... If he's attached to McDonald's cups, he's attached to you know, diabetic needle. And then, yeah. and, then you got, and then you got to worry about COVID and everything. That's... Wow. All right, so that's... Uh, <laughs> so, so, so that's it for that car, y'all. Y'all told him, but hopefully he do. But you said that wasn't the... That wasn't the first. What was what was another one, bro? Well, and did you I, and did I you get that, that and did you get that on video? No, no, this is the last one. This one here was the first one I've seen since I've gotten on TikTok. Mm-hmm. And I don't see them like that often, but I have seen about three or four of them like that. Hey. And you know, the the worst one I've ever seen is it was a girl's car. Or some people are gonna go crap typical, but you know, it just it is what it is. And the only reason she brought her car in and this is gonna get kind of weird. Mm-hmm. She said she kept hearing a buzzing noise inside her car. And he, I looked at her car and of course it was packed. Now it wasn't trash, but it was clothes. Mm-hmm. And I was sitting there looking at it, you know, trying to figure out how to work on this car because there's you know all these clothes were dirty and like moldy and stinky and just just, just rough Ooh. rough looking Ooh. and yeah like i said she kept saying she kept hearing a buzzing noise and i, I put my head in the window and i was sitting there listening and even when the car was off it was Still you could hear it and found it in her trunk and what it was was something i really didn't want to touch That apparently got turned on. <laughs> and she <laughs> and she thought it was something. That must have been a strong ass buzzing thing, man. Let's just let's just put it to you this way. There, I, there, there wasn't a thing I could do for her. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Just, wow. She was on her own when it comes. Wow. So I mean, you just, so, that thing to win the World Series. Wow. So when you called her up and told her what it was, how, how did she react to it? Uh, matter of factly, actually. I mean, she didn't even bat an eye. Like, oh, that's where it went. You know, uh, uh, we're not going to talk about the, the girth certificate that came with this thing, are we? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you said a birth certificate with it. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. That's crazy. Yeah, she's like, I'm, I've been looking for this. I've been wondering where it was at. I'm like, you used it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Woo! Well, there you have it. There you go. The, the, the monster vibrator. Yeah. Uh, damn yeah, like it. Like I said, I... I saw that and went, you know what? Nope, job's done. Job's done. That's it. <laughs> you said this, you said that's <laughs> it. Listen. And and the clothes and the stinkiness. Oh man, I cannot believe a female yeah. could could be that nasty, man. Oh, yeah, she was she was something. Like I said, I don't know I don't know I don't know her situation either. Like I can say it wasn't trash, it was just moldy clothes and I mean it looks like she'd wear it once and then throw it in her truck or, or, or in her seat and that was it. You say one and done, huh? Pretty much. <laughs> wow. And 
And like I said, at least hers, it wasn't, you know, trash, but other things. <laughs> and I mean, I mean, I found I found all kinds of weird stuff in people's cars when I actually have to do work on them. Mm-hmm. You know, from <laughs> from the toy to the dumpster that I worked on in the video to drugs. I find drugs all the time in people's cars. That's crazy. And of course, you say anything about it, they're like, oh, those are mine. <laughs> uh, bruh. Bruh. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll, okay. Whatever you say, my G. <laughs> yeah. Great, <Like>, man. <laughs> Great, man. Thank you for coming on, man. I really do appreciate the love, man. And, and the conversation was awesome. I, I enjoyed myself on this one, man. Whoop. What uh what what made you get on TikTok, man? I mean, you know, with 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 platforms like YouTube and and Instagram, what what, what made uh, TikTok your platform of choice? Well, it started. I had a uh, fiance who was all about YouTube, mm-hmm. and she was so proud of her, you know, five subscribers. Which I mean, you start off somewhere, no matter what you know what platform you're on. You always start off from somewhere. Mm-hmm. But she had these five subscribers since the, you know, I don't know, 2007. <laughs> so she, her, her, her stuff was stale. I mean, and stuff like that. And of course, I was always there to support her. I wouldn't sit there and you know tell her that. Right. At least at the time. And uh, yeah, at the time, I even tried to help her out. I even got on her YouTube channel and, and did some funny stuff. And the problem is, is people ended up liking me on her channel more than her. And uh, so, she, so after a while, she's like, you're not allowed on my YouTube no more. I'm like, okay. So I cranked up TikTok. And within my first two weeks on TikTok, I already had like 800 uh, followers. And, you know, I'm like, hey, check this out. She's like, I don't care. Don't show me. And she just got all bitter about it. So when she got all bitter about it, I was like, Let's ride this train and see how far it goes. <laughs> Y'all two still together or Oh no, no, no. Oh, great. No. It, it wouldn't it, it was it very... wouldn't, Y'all two wouldn't separate because of social media, would y'all? No. Oh, okay. I okay. wouldn't let something that, that petty. No, she was just a very toxic person and I didn't need that in my life, so I decided to you know what no. There you go. Get get away from it. Get away from it. Because if you stay with it, you you don't even know where you'll be right now if you were to stay with it. So I'm, yeah. glad, I'm glad you was able to get away from it, bro. Oh yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, it's a lot easier to get it. You know, for me, it was it was pretty easy to get out of it. Now it's just it's hard as hell to get back into it. But I mean, it was pretty easy to get out of. It. But uh. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Now. What gets me is, uh, you know, I looked at my phone today and there's 30,000, you know, there's 30,000 numbers right there below my, my profile. I'm like, whoa, why? <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. Great, man. Again, man, thank you for coming in. You know, you definitely. How was your holiday, bro? It was good. I actually shared it with uh, my neighbors, uh, some friends. I, actually, I, I, had, I had to go to several Thanksgiving things. All right, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Keep it up. Keep it up, man. Thank you for coming on. I really do appreciate you talking and uh and you are a citizen now, so if you get another if you get another biohazard, man, make sure you reach out to me so we can talk about it. <laughs> all right. I come across interesting things all the time. That's what's up, man. Where can the people find you at, bro? They can find me on TikTok with that customer state guy. I'm like Beethoven with the bass on it, make classic kids a win pop. Death to the hater won't stop. Let's talk key scales, it won't drop. You don't even need a scale to know I'm on top. Me and Mozart, could bars, you got pops. Urge right and Tiffany, a whole symphony. You a symptom to me, but go off. Or make a masterpiece for you, or at least it's gonna hit like rum, pump, pump. Y'all fit to me like the symphony. Your career's done, done, done.